Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Backstage, our online MBA event. Uh, today, we have three schools. Two are already in the house. The third is on the way. Uh, we have from the Gies College of Business at the University of Illinois, Casey Jones. Casey is the Associate Director of Recruitment and Admissions from USC's Marshall School of Business in California. We have Miriam Burgess, who is Associate Professor of Clinical Marketing, and we will be joined soon by Carla Mueller, who's Director of Admissions at the Jack Welch Management Institute. So Miriam and Casey, welcome. How are you today? Thank you so much. Doing great. Really happy to be here. Yeah, doing let's, well. uh, let's get in on some of the basics of your programs uh, for the online MBA. Tell me a little bit about the, the program, its structure, how long it's been around, how many students uh, you intake in a given year, how many intakes you have. Uh, Casey, let's start with you. Sure. So as John mentioned, uh, representing our online MBA known as the IMBA program at the University of Illinois Geese College of Business. Uh, we launched our fully online MBA program in 2016. Um, and have grown to about 5,000 current students. We do have four formal intakes each year, um, two in what you would consider the traditional fall semester. So students can start in August or October, and then two in what you would think of as your traditional spring semester. So starting either in January or March. Um, we'll see about 800 new students this fall, slightly smaller number around the 700 mark um, in the spring semester. So class sizes are large, but we are really committed um, to providing personalization, um, flexibility, uh, affordability. Our program is offered at a total tuition of just under 23,000. So we really set out to make a program that's online by design to provide access to quality education for learners across the globe um, at what we feel is our most affordable price point. Um, tuition is charged as you enroll for courses throughout the duration of the program. Most students are completing the degree in two to three years, um, although that can be stretched all the way up to five years if desired. This really is a program designed for working professionals. Um, we require a minimum of three years of work experience, although the average is closer to 11 years around the age of 37 and represents um, students from a variety of different industries and levels of experience, as well as parts of the globe. We have students um, from over 100 countries. Um, and so that diversity of thought is incredibly important in, in the classroom. Um, we yeah, and, you, and you, it's very big. Uh, obviously, of the three programs here, you're by far the largest with over five thousand students. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's large, but it still feels. I think if you talk to any of our current students, and I know one will be joining in the next hour, um, it still feels intimate, both with our faculty and with peer students. Um, group work is a huge component of our program, uh, there's breakout sessions, there's office hours, and so you still feel that you have that connection. It's a combination of asynchronous and synchronous uh, learning, so you have that flexibility that you would expect with an online program, but still um, the focus and the commitment to, to being personal and having those conversations that are incredibly important, building that network, um, which most MBA students are really looking forward to. Great. Uh, Miriam, how about USC Marshall? Give us the outline of the program and structure, how many students you have, how many intakes, uh, the basics. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, in terms of the history of our program, our program was launched in the fall of 2015. And we started off with a very student-centered design in mind. Um, so we held many focus groups with prospective students. We held focus groups with our existing residential students to really try to understand uh, what the, the best uh, curriculum design would be, including, for example, the balance between synchronous and asynchronous work, which uh, our program also uh, tries to, to really balance that for working professionals. So we have live sessions 
uh, uh, twice weekly in every one of our courses to give students that sense of being in the classroom and interacting with their faculty and their classmates. But we also incorporate um, asynchronous components so that you have that flexibility that working professionals are looking for. And many of our students, for example, travel extensively for work because of uh, the responsibilities that they have as uh, executives or aspiring executives within their companies. Um, we um, have uh, in the fall uh, semester, we uh, typically have two cohorts that come in um, anywhere, you know, between say 75 to 120 students divided into two groups of classes that meet um, on a regular basis twice weekly. Um, in the spring, we have one intake, we have one cohort, so a single cohort that comes in during the spring intake. So you're basically looking at a start date of either January or August. Um, and one of the hallmarks of our program is what we refer to as the residential intensive. So the residential intensive is a week long uh, experience on campus um, at the University of Southern California where all of our incoming students get to meet each other, they get to meet their faculty, uh, they start to form bonds and network with one another so that when they do embark on that uh, journey, uh, which is entirely online for the remainder of the program, they have built some connections, they have uh, met in person all of their classmates, and they have that foundation to move forward uh, in, the, in the program. Uh, very, very successfully. Um, our faculty are deeply committed to student success, and they're the same faculty who teach in our on-the-ground residential uh, programs, so our students truly become part of uh, the, the greater Trojan family at Marshall. So that's a little bit of a background about our program. Great, really helpful. And Carla Mueller, uh, welcome. Uh, oh, Carla, you. of course, is Director of Admissions at the Jack Welch Management Institute. Uh, give us a rough idea of the program, how long it's been around, how many students you have, uh, what, how many intakes, uh, what people will go through. Absolutely. Thank you, John. And thank you for inviting me today. I'm so sorry it was a few minutes late. I was having technical difficulties, but uh, it's great to be with you all. And I would love to give you a 30,000 foot view of the program. So uh, Jack Welch uh, created this program about 11 years ago. His vision being that he really saw a need for there to be, you know, top tier uh, MBA program, you know, with the very best accreditation and, and um, top rankings. But Jack's vision was to have something that was going to be really practical uh, so that really busy working professionals had a way to earn an MBA without you know, losing momentum in their career. So we, we started the program um, over a decade ago. I started almost uh, from the beginning with Jack and Susie and helped launch the program and excited to say now 10 years later, we have over 3,200 you know, alumni. We uh, typically have anywhere from 17 to 2,000 enrolled students at a time. Uh, we have a highly engaged networking community and really active alumni. Um, but the biggest differentiators, John, is you know, this program is 100% asynchronous. Um, it is online. The classes are small. Um, one of our biggest differentiators truly is our faculty. So we have 150 award-winning faculty. They've actually been ranked number one as far as overall quality. That was Jack's vision. He wanted something where, you know, um, you know, our students could be learning from experts in the field. And so all of our faculty uh, are um, obviously have their terminal de degrees, but also are experts that, that come from industry. And so they're teaching in real world applicable ways. So we don't have midterm exams or final exams. You're not doing long research papers in our program. Our program is designed to be very practical and, and immediately actionable for students. And um, that we really are student centric. That was Jack's other vision. We, we kind of live and breathe by our, our net promoter scores uh, because our students' uh, voices are very important to us and we're constantly improving you know, the way we're doing things. But as it stands right now, uh, you know, you'll be in class with about 18, 19 other students and a highly engaged faculty, all those interactions are gonna be asynchronous for the most part. 
Now, that being said, there's going to be a lot of opportunities, and I can talk about this later with our networking community, and also your professor will host, host some virtual um, synchronous opportunities that will be 100% optional for you, so that's never going to play into your grade. Um, we have mobile apps. Um, it's uh, We have students from all over the world, so uh, we have 89 countries, I think, now represented in the program, John, and uh, all 48 states, so really exciting mix of students that you'll be in class with. Our average student is 40, uh, typically 15 years of experience, so a little bit more seasoned um, student. It's a 12 course MBA um, that you can complete in as little as 18 months. Um, now that would be taking two classes every quarter. And we're on a quarter system here. So we, en we enroll every quarter, um, every fall we enroll in October, every winter in January, spring quarter starts uh, the 1st of April. And then our summer start, uh, quarter always starts the 1st of July. So we are um, enrolling new students every quarter. And the great thing about the program is you can get, you really pace it as you go. So if you took two classes every quarter, our quarters are 10 weeks with about two to three weeks of break in between, you'd be done in 18 months. Now that being said, most of our students are averaging uh, two, and, two to two and a half years to get through the program. Uh, if you took one class per quarter, it would take you three years to, pro to get through the program. In fact, that's what I did. I'm also a graduate of the program. Um, wow. And then uh, our students uh, our students can take longer than that. A lot of our students actually need to sit out a quarter or two because of the nature of their job. Um, and so there, there's no set requirement as far as the, the duration it's going to take to finish the 12 courses, other than I'll say the Department of Education requirement is it be that you have to finish within a 10-year window. So, um, right. Uh, that, uh, but but as far as the flexibility, that's really key for our students because you know we have everything from uh, professional athletes in the program to CEOs to um, everything on down active duty military people. So a lot of the the nature of a lot of our students' jobs um, does have them have to sit out a quarter two, which is absolutely fine, and we're in full support of that. So um, twelve courses, anywhere from uh, two and a half, or I'm sorry, a year and a half to three years and beyond. Uh, we have our traditional leadership MBA, and then we also have uh, concentrations in human resources. We have a concentration healthcare, and our most recent, our newest concentration, which has become really popular, is in operations management. Huh. Great, uh, great overview. So give me a sense of learning experience. Uh, Casey, let's start with you. What would be a typical week like for a student in the online program at Keys? Sure, so I think as I mentioned, we combine asynchronous and synchronous learning. Mm -hmm. We do partner with the Coursera platform to offer that asynchronous component. Um, we often refer to that as the virtual textbook for the course. So there's gonna be some pre-recorded lectures, reading, self-assessed um, quizzes that can be done in advance if desired. Um, but then that's partnered with what we call our high engagement component. And I think that's what you would expect maybe in a more traditional classroom. We do offer live lectures. Um, those are typically offered up to three times a week. Same lectures, so it just gives you the flexibility in when to attend. Um, they're also recorded though, so available to watch on demand if needed. Um, that live lecture though is going to include interaction with faculty, um, polls, discussion um, in the chat. It often features um, breakout sessions. So, you know, getting together with a small group of fellow students, having a conversation and then bringing that back to the larger uh, classroom discussion. In addition to those live lectures, you are gonna have kind of some of your standard uh, graded quizzes and exams. Um, but the group projects are really a critical component of each of our courses as well. Um, the weight of group projects varies, um, often based on a you know, quantitative course versus a qualitative course, but it is a component of, of every course in our program. Again, kind of builds in some of that networking and collaboration uh, with your peers. Typically, we recommend that students spend about 10 to 15 hours of work um, per week per course. Uh, similar, as Carla mentioned, most of our students are taking one to two courses, um, and ours run an eight-week session, so one to two courses every eight weeks. So in addition to a lot, if I was taking one course, I would get the, a weekly class live, and then the rest of the time I would spend doing reading, 
uh, and working with my classmates on different projects, right? Yeah, for the most part, you may have an individual assignment or a quiz that could be taken. You know, typically there's a window of time for a quiz or exam to be taken. Okay, great. And Miriam, at USC Marshall, what, what's a, a typical week like for an online MBA? So a typical week for one of our students would involve attending class, for example, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Tuesday evening and 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Thursday evening. Uh, those are our uh, live sessions, which feel very much like a traditional residential classroom, but they're held, the, the sessions are held on Zoom. And in, in order to prepare for those live sessions, our students um, access all of their course materials through Canvas. That's the uh, learning management system that we use. So everything is posted there ahead of time, including learning objectives for the week as well as for the semester so that students are aware of what they should be focusing on, what their goals should be for the week. And then when they come to class, when they come into the live session, our faculty make extensive use of interactive tools during the session. So for example, breakout groups are also very popular uh, as, a, as a, a pedagogical tool in our classrooms. I know I use it extensively. I actually, in addition to, to serving as academic director of our program, I'm also a marketing professor at Marshall. And so I use these tools extensively. I have my students go into breakout groups, address a case that they've read in preparation for the class session. And then when we come back together, we have a very vibrant discussion about their observations and their conclusions that they've come to based on uh, what they've read and what they've prepared for the week. So that is essentially what a week would feel like. There's a substantial amount of work, I would say, to prepare for the live sessions to make sure that the, the discussions are very deep and rich. Um, and um, we typically tell our students that depending on the week, they're looking at spending anywhere between 15 and during an exam week, they may be spending 25, maybe 30 hours of time during the week to prepare. So it's, it's very demanding, uh, but the rewards come in the form of these, these very vibrant live uh, classroom discussions. And when you say Tuesday and Thursday, would that be if you were taking two courses or is that even just for one? That's actually for one course. And that I should address the design of our curriculum. Our curriculum is designed so that students study four subjects at a time in an integrated fashion. So you, you would only take one course per semester, but it really mm -hmm. feels more like taking two. It feels oh. like taking two very, very substantial uh, courses. And, and this is because of the way in which our uh, topic, our subject areas are integrated and the way in which our faculty teach these subject areas. They actually teach them in such a way that whenever there is an organic connection between the two subject areas, the faculty will present uh, that particular connection together. They will lead the students through a discussion together um, so that, for example, if there's a challenge that involves both cost accounting and marketing, those two faculty will actually come together and teach uh, the class jointly. So it, it really is um, the, the, the way that our students go through the program uh, always involves two two hour sessions of class per week. So a total of four hours uh, in class per week. Great. And, and Carla, a typical week in your program, uh, I don't have to go to class really, but I have a lot of work to do anyway. Well, and you do, John, yeah, thank you. Um, yes, you do have to actually log into your class and you have to uh, huh. log in several times throughout the week. But the beautiful thing is you log in whatever day of the week or time of the day is required for you. So um, you are required to log in each week because you're gonna have every week you'll log into that week and you'll have uh, pre-recorded lectures for the week that you listen to on your own time frame. So there are, there are um, gonna be lectures and video content from um, all of our experts of, of practice, including you know, Jack Welch and Warren Buffett, and we have three dozen you know, top tier CEOs. You're gonna have some pre-recorded content by them as well as pre-recorded lectures from your individual uh, faculty. Um, so you're gonna listen to those on your own, on your own time. Uh, you'll have your reading assignments listed there 
for the week. Uh, I should mention most of our textbooks are more modern business books and news sources as opposed to traditional um, academic uh, textbooks. And so, but you will have your reading assignments and your lectures to listen to and absorb. Um, you'll have a discussion question that you'll answer on the discussion board. So that's where a lot of the magic actually is happening. Um, you were having a lot of uh, discussion and discourse back and forth between the students and the faculty all happening on the discussion boards. Now, there will be a couple, as I mentioned, optional live sessions per, cl per, uh, per class, but those are never ever going to be required of you uh, because some for some of our students it's impossible but they'll all and they'll always be pre-recorded so there is opportunity for that live engagement if students are really craving that um, but that's not ever going to be required or or be a part of the grade so that is there for you your your professor also will host every hour or every week uh, individual um, uh, hours in which they can connect one on one with students so they give a lot of one on one engagement if the student wants that um, to help them that again the 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 curriculum and the way the courses are designed are designed to be very practical and immediately yeah. actionable. So a lot of times a professor might be taking, talking about a concept that a student learned, you know, that week, whatever the topic was, and then, you know, kept connecting with the student one-on-one -on -one to help them talk about how, how they can apply it in their own, um, you know, in their own role, in their own, in their own organization. So a lot of kind of um, hands-on guidance as much as you want, but um, the things that are required of you are logging in every week, several times throughout the week, so you can get your discussion posts uh, up by Wednesday night. Um, and then you'll have to reply to at least two of your peers by Sunday. So um, they'll be, but, but most of our students are engaging a lot more than just the, the three times on the discussion board. So that's half of your grade for each class actually is your uh, participation in the, in, on, on the weekly uh, discussion boards. And then your other half is gonna come from an average of three to four short assignments per class. Mm -hmm. It's about 10 to uh, 15 hours per week. Uh, is what we say is a good rule of thumb. You'll have three short assignments. The assignments are short, practical in nature uh, assignments of so three to five page papers. Uh, it might be a, a, a video that you're submitting to your professor, but they're designed to be really practical. Um, and you taking what you're learning and uh, talking about how you're gonna apply it in your, in your real world. So that's the other half of your grade in addition to you getting graded. And there's some you know, few short quizzes here and there. There's not a lot of group work. We have one class I think where there's a group assignment. You're gonna have a lot of interaction with your peers. Um, they're gonna, there's a lot of peer to peer learning but most of the learning is individual. So there's not a, a group component to, mo to um, almost all of the, the uh, courses. Great. Um, you know, in a traditional MBA program, there's a lot of emphasis put on professional development. Uh, some of this comes through a student's involvement in extracurricular activities and clubs. Uh, some of it comes through exercises in classes, uh, be they team dynamics or leading others or working with diverse groups of people. Uh, and a lot of times we refer to this as sort of soft skill development. I'm wondering, uh, in an online MBA program, how you might address the whole issue of developing one's soft skills, the ability to lead others, the ability to work effectively in a team, uh, particularly a remote team, uh, and things like that that make you more effective in the world of work. Miriam, what does USC Marshall do in that area? Well, we actually have as part of our um, as, as part of our residential career services office, we have someone who is exclusively dedicated to our online MBA students, and we refer to all of these counselors in our career services office as career strategists. So we have one, we have a, a career strategist who is exclusively dedicated to working with uh, our online MBA student population. Um, but she's also very dedicated to connecting them with uh, other organizations across our campus that are open to any student in any of our MBA programs. And we have a, a couple of different MBA programs, um, but this keeps the students plugged into the overall Marshall network. So that's one of the things that we do. We also have many events that are specifically tailored uh, to our online MBA student population. So for example, there are speaker events that are held exclusively virtually. Um, mm. We also build into our curriculum 
so this is something that's part of the very first semester uh, that students take in our program. We also build into our curriculum uh, several cases that explore this question of how do you lead a virtual team? How do you uh, create cohesiveness on a team that is not co-located? If you're at the helm of a team for a multinational firm, for example, what are some best practices that can help you um, right. successfully lead that team? All of that is built in. So we really do sort of attack this question of soft skills from many different angles at Marshall. And Casey, at Keys, how do you approach the soft skill development aspect of the program? Sure. So, you know, again, it's built in a lot of ways through the classes and through that required group component. Um, what's interesting is a lot of the students in our, our IMBA program are natural leaders and, and they have those strong soft skills, but how do they interact with other leaders and maybe how do they learn to be also a contributor in some of those types of situations. And so it's something we certainly evaluate um, through the admissions process, but then also continue to build through the classrooms, um, through professional development sessions, particularly um, at an, a large event we have called I Converge each year. Um, that's often one of the focuses is on that soft skill development. Um, so there are opportunities outside of the classroom, both in person um, and online to continue to build that. And then I think thirdly, through the, the curriculum itself, right? Leadership and management is one of our core specializations, which all students go through. Um, and even those that have strong soft skills, I think, come away with something uh, at the end. They always feel that there's value. It is that practical application of taking something in the classroom and applying it um, the next day. Great. Now, Carla, I know Jack Welch had a lot uh, to say about leadership and what makes for a good leader and the importance of developing self-confidence uh, in a job. How, how do you translate Jack's thinking about what makes a great leader into the program and into students? I love that, such a great question. And, and in fact, the very first class that every single student takes regardless of concentration is that leadership course um, because it's foundational we feel regardless of concentration. And that leadership cor uh, course, like I said, it's foundational. It's teaching Jack Welch's, you know, eight leadership principles. You read Jack Welch's book winning, but um, even more importantly, you're, we have you, uh, students do a DISC assessment so they can figure out their leadership styles and their leadership strengths. In fact, the very first assignment is after they do the DISC assessment, um, you know, writing a paper about their, you know, their, um, their leadership style, their le leadership strengths, but those leadership and soft, soft skills are definitely woven throughout all of the courses in the program. Um, and there's a tremendous amount of um, focus on that, as well as, you know, uh, like I said, the first class is leadership and, and it's all about that. And um, not only, you know, how becoming a great leader, but learning, you know, how to communicate with, with other leaders and, um, you know, uh, how to really um, transform yourself into the type of leader that you want to be. Um, and in fact, uh, we, we constantly are serving our students and um, our last alumni uh, uh, survey, survey it's 97% uh, of our alumni said their confidence as a leader had grown exponentially after having gone through the program. So again, that's really key for us because that was so big, you know, uh, for Jack as he wanted to, you know, create the next generation of great, of great leaders. So um, it's kind of woven throughout everything in our program. Yeah. I would think it would pretty much have to be, yeah. <laughs> uh, given his emphasis on, on leadership. Right. Um, so I wonder if I were to have the chance to sit down with some of your students who are about to graduate from these programs, and I asked them, tell me three things that you learned uh, as a result of the program, and three things that will kind of like resonate with you throughout your professional and maybe even your personal life. What are the three things that people would tell me at Marshall, Miriam? I think the first one um, would be leadership. Uh, certainly that would be something that students would say that regardless of the industry that they work in, that they really polished their leadership style uh, at Marshall. I think they would say, um, I suspect many of them would quote many of the lessons that they learned by 
uh, taking uh, something called the strengths um, the strengths development inventory test SDI. Uh, which is, 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 you know, same idea where you sort of test your leadership style, try to really kind of define it and, and better understand it, and then understand how to polish it and how to really apply that um, as they move upward and onward in, in their careers as executives. So I think leadership would be a big theme, a big takeaway from uh, our program. Um, on a personal and on both a personal and professional level, many of our students, I think, would mentioned the Trojan family. This is something that is really important at USC Marshall and at, at USC in general. So not just the business school, but across the university, the sense of being a part of something bigger, of something that really transcends just the time that you spend in graduate school, but that really kind of becomes truly a family. The friendships mm -hmm. that you build, the connections that you build uh, later on will, will be very meaningful, both professionally uh, and personally. And then I think the third area our students would mention is analytics. Um, and in a, in a, in a sense it, or in a, in a manner that is industry agnostic. So regardless of the industry that our students are working in, the foundation that they build in our program uh, in terms of analytics and predictive modeling is something that really helps them make truly data-driven decisions uh, that help them shine as leaders and that help them be very successful. So I think those are three areas our students would mention. Terrific. Casey, name three. Yeah, I think that's a hard one because students come in with such differing backgrounds. So if you ask them about, you know, what is the core concepts that you took from this program, um, some were lacking in financial skills and they really feel stronger in that area when they depart. Others, you know, have strong technical skills, but it's those creative courses or their entrepreneurship specialization that really push them. Um, but I think on, on a broad basis, collaboration is the first one that comes to mind. Um, you know, working in global teams, working in global markets, working with uh, individuals across different levels of experience. Maybe you're you're a younger professional and working with someone in a CEO position or vice versa. You've been working with leadership at the top and it's an opportunity to step back and have a team member that's a little more junior and mentor them, um, not only in the program, but also throughout their career and answer some of those, those type of questions. Um, I touched on this, I, I said collaboration is the first one, but also hit on that globalization. Um, we have a, a specialization, a focus area specialization specifically in um, global uh, challenges in business. But I think regardless of whether you take that focus specialization or not, um, students do have a new appreciation of working with individuals um, across the world, whether that may be as simple as uh, um, you know, figuring out different time zones or much more complex on how businesses work in different right. parts of the globe. I think that's an incredibly valuable uh, aspect in today's world. And then I think thirdly, it's the time management piece. People know this is going to be a challenge um, coming in, um, but it's something that you prioritize, right? And you figure out how to, what's important, um, what can be cut out, what you value and appreciate. And then I think as we see students graduating from the program and having that open uh, time, what, what they value moving forward as well, um, the continuation of lifelong education and, and the value that that brings to them is incredibly important. And I think something that we've seen from alums that graduated a couple of years back, um, they're still committed to investing in themselves and understanding that they can make that time commitment um, if the right motivations are there. Right. Good point. Uh, how about Carla at uh, Jack Welch? What are the three things, three big takeaways for your graduates? Oh, well, that's a hard one to narrow it down to three, but you know, I'll share with you our mission and Jack's mission for the program was, in, and I think that this is three of the, the greatest take, takeaways is, you know, our mission was to help students become great leaders. I think mm -hmm. that leadership is one of the biggest things that students walk away with. Um, whether they're an official leadership role or not, they, they have learned their confidence as a leader has has grown exponentially. Um, so to build great leaders um, um, and to help them to build great teams. So it's all about, once you become a leader, as Jack says, it's not about you anymore. It's about building, how to build 
great teams, how to instill confidence in people, how, you know, the people management side of things is so important in this and, and such an emphasis of Jack's because it was about, you know, built, making your team great and how do you build your team and how do you instill them with confidence and what do you, types of things do you need to do to motivate them, um, you know, to coach them, to guide them. So those are, I think, are great um, skill sets that all of the students that graduate with our MBA program uh, come away with. And then the third thing is how to help your organization win. Um, and so that's everything from marketing to strategy, you know, to finance, to really have that CEO mindset. Um, so, you know, become a great leader, build great teams and help your organization win and have strategy and think like, you know, Jack and Warren Buffett and all these other great experts of industry that you're going to be learning from. For me personally, I'll tell you, one of my greatest takeaways was I love the finance courses because I wasn't a finance person before. And I absolutely love being able to, you know, understand and think um, and have, and invest like Warren invests, you know, learn about moats and that type of thing. But um, in general, I think it's really having that, that CEO mindset. And really it does, you know, it changes the way the world looks at you. It changes the way you look at the world. It gives you a seat at the table, you know, with their, your finance people, with your marketing people, whether you want to be the CMO or CFO or not, you can speak their language. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, totally. Uh, what about the admissions process? So I wonder you know, what does it take to apply? What are you looking for in an ideal candidate? And then finally, uh, in this package of questions about admissions, how do you determine fit? Miriam, let's start with you at, in USC Marshall. Sure, absolutely. And I'll start with the question of how we determine fit because it's such an important one. Um, and we um, look to build cohorts that are very diverse uh, in terms of many different factors, including, for example, industry background. Um, and it's, um, it, it is a very enriching experience for our students when they have a discussion in the classroom, for example, where they hear input from equally accomplished leaders across different industries. And so they hear how other students in, in uh, in different industries, how their fellow students in different industries may approach a challenge in creative ways that maybe they haven't thought of before, even though they themselves are successful and accomplished in their own industry. So for that reason, we really look for uh, a very well-rounded group of students to form each of our cohorts. So the fit really has to do not with, uh, you know, an exact number of years of work experience or an exact GPA. And, and I, you know, I suspect any top online MBA program is going to have that philosophy, right? That they're looking for a well-rounded mm. group of students who will learn successfully from each other. So that's something to keep in mind when you apply to our program, to USC Marshall, that we take a very holistic look at your application for that reason. So there shouldn't be any one factor that makes any potential applicant doubt whether they should or uh, it, whether they should in fact apply. Because again, we do take that very holistic look um, at um, our application packages. Uh, our application package is pretty traditional. Uh, you know, it's um, a couple of essays. Uh, we do require uh, one or two letters of recommendation um, and we also require uh, an interview as well uh, with uh, our admissions team. So a very traditional uh, process. And again, what we're looking, what we're doing in that in that uh, process is taking a very holistic look at your work experience. For example, do you have relevant work experience that will help you participate meaningfully in class discussions and have very deep discussions about the cases that we work on in class, for example? Um, and um, finally, the, the last uh, detail that I'll mention is with regards to uh, diversity of, of in other senses as well. We really do look for uh, representation of women, for example, uh, in our cohorts. Um, uh, also, um, students of color, we also make sure that, that we keep um, an eye on that aspect of, of our cohort because, again, the more diversity that you have in our experience as faculty, the richer that these, these in-classroom live discussions become. Um, so you know, I think holistic is the, is the big theme in our, in our admissions process at Marshall. Got it. Casey, I'm assuming there are similar approaches at uh, Gies. Am I right? Yeah, 
Yeah, very much so. I didn't want to say just ditto to Miriam's um, response, but it really is that holistic approach. Um, very similar. We look for diversity of our cohort, um, what students are going to contribute to the the curriculum and education of others, those, those conversations that they're having in live lectures and in group projects is really um, important and, and something that we really look at when determining fit. Mm -hmm. I think one thing particular for us is we're a very uh, collaborative rather than competitive program. So we don't have a seat limitation. We aren't comparing uh, Joe to Bob at the end of the day, but everyone that is a good fit for the program is going to, to be offered admission and that opportunity um, to pursue their MBA with geese. In terms of the application, again, similar kind of traditional, you know, we're going to need a, your resume, a copy of all of your academic history. Um, we have a couple of essays, two letters of recommendation. Um, we don't require any uh, standardized tests except for English proficiency for those that um, native language isn't, isn't English, but we don't require the GMAT or GRE. Uh, if you have a score and would like to submit it, um, we will certainly consider it as part of the review process, but certainly not um, required. We do have an interview process. That interview will either take place with one of our staff members from the admissions team or an alum of the program. Great. Carla, how about at Jack Welch Management Institute? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, John. Uh, so bachelor's degree, that's a ticket to the game, Jack gets to call it. And so uh, we have students from all over the world. And so there's a lot of equivalent bachelor's degrees out there, but a bachelor's degree or the equivalent of that um, for our international students. And we have about 18 to 20 percent of our students are international. Um, we'll pay for and take care of the international transcript evaluation. So we establish a bachelor's right off the bat. From there, it's really, uh, again, about the holistic experience. We have an application. There isn't a one-page essay on leadership. As far as the recommendation goes, um, the recommendation is going to come from the interview that you have with either myself or somebody on my admissions team. That interview is really important. And then, of course, we require a resume or LinkedIn profile. But the interview is really important because we have a really um, a, a deep conversation with, with every applicant, either before or after they apply, but certainly before we present them to the admissions board. We want to find out, you know, are you a good fit for the program? Do you have you know, we like to see at least five years of experience and all the GR, the GRE and GMAT is a requirement for us. However, uh, if you have five or more years of experience, that's automatically waived. So 99% of our students, it's waived for because our average student has, you know, at least five years of experience. Um, but so again, that interview is really critical because we, we sit down or we talk with, uh, with every single applicant um, and we figure out you know, what their experience is, are they going to be a good fit for the program, but equally as important to us, we want to find out their educational and career goals and take a good look and make sure that, that this program is a good fit for the candidate, because it's really important for, for Jack, for all of us on the admissions uh, board to make sure we're good stewards of our, our students' time and energy and financial investment. So we want to make sure they're a good fit for us and, and, and on the same token that we're the best fit for them. Great. Um, Carla, can you take us through the uh, upcoming uh, deadlines for your applications? And, yeah, and absolutely. We just, we just, reach out for you? Yeah, absolutely. We just finished up enrolling for the summer quarter. In fact, last day was, uh, yesterday was the last day. So um, the summer quarter is, uh, summer students are on their way. We're now enrolling for the fall term, uh, which starts the first Monday in October, October 3rd. Um, so we are accepting applications now for the fall term, also for the winter term that starts in January, but we love, you know, we love to see the other thing I'd, I'd like to encourage students is if you're going to apply, you know, we love the admissions board loves to see students who are ready to get going, you know, if, if they're accepted into the program to get excited and, and ready to get going. So we're enrolling for the fall term, we're accepting applications now um, to get a hold of me, um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, I'm the only uh, Carla Bates Mueller on LinkedIn. You can go to our website, jwmi.com, um, and fill out a request for information. But the, the quickest way to get a hold of me is just go connect with me on LinkedIn and we can start communicating there. Again, I'm Carla Bates Mueller, the only one on LinkedIn, and um, I'm happy to chat with you from there. And you are on Twitter as well. And when you earned your MBA, 
in May of 2017, here's how you announced it to the world. Holy crap, I just got my MBA. Now it's your turn. <laughs> I love it. Miriam, what are your upcoming deadlines at USC Marshall and how can folks reach out and get more information from you? Um, so our, we're currently enrolling for the fall semester. The, for the fall semester, our application deadlines are closed, unfortunately. So we're now, you know, sort of forming that, that cohort. That cohort will begin in August. So the third week in August is when the residential intensive week will be taking place on our campus, uh, something I, I mentioned a, a little while ago um, as sort of that first step, you know, in, in terms of, of uh, how our students begin their journey in our online MBA program. Um, so that's what is happening right now. Uh, for spring of 2023, we will be, uh, our application window is open now for, for spring of 2023. And we basically have multiple uh, deadlines uh, throughout the, the fall semester. So think of it as multiple deadlines between now and uh, December, uh, where you can apply for um, our spring uh, 2023 cohort. Um, I, I forgot to mention there is no GMAT requirement uh, for uh, spring 2023. And um, if you do have a GMAT or a GRE score, we do encourage students to um, submit it as part of what they wish to showcase uh, in their application, but it is not a requirement. Uh, and to get more information um, about uh, our program, you can uh, just go to marshall.usc.edu uh, and you'll find uh, a link to our online uh, MBA program, as well as uh, some details about deadlines and all the information uh, about the admissions process. Terrific. And Casey, what's your next deadline of geese? Sure. So September 8th is our next deadline that will be for our fall two session, which will start in October. Um, I'd always encourage you to apply earlier, though, if possible, so you have a little more time for that onboarding process and, and begin making those connections prior to starting your program. Um, our application for the spring 2023 session will also uh, open this coming Monday, so that opportunity will be available soon as well. Um, to get in contact with me, you know, email is the best opportunity, um, but I would also encourage you to, to visit our website. Um, it's onlinemba.illinois.edu. Uh, we have a lot of different opportunities to connect, not only with our staff, but with current students. Um, you can do what we call a mock class, so actually get a sampling of what a live lecture is like, and that's a great opportunity. Um, we have office hours with uh, student ambassadors. We have office hours for application tips and tricks. Um, so just a lot of different ways to connect and really best fits your schedule and needs. Terrific. Well, Casey, thank you. Miriam, thank you. And Carla, thank you for joining us today. Uh, really appreciate your time and your insights. And I hope all of you out there have gotten a lot more information about these three terrific programs. Uh, three very different options that you can pursue to get an online MBA while you're still working, still earning money, uh, flexible schedules, you can do it from anywhere in the world. Um, and that's really the great benefit of doing an online MBA. This is John Brennan with Poets and Quants. You've been watching our backstage seminar on finding the right online MBA program for you.